Can you all hear me all right? Yes? Perfect. <clears throat> okay. So good morning, everybody. Um, my thought for you today is uh, inspired by a little something I heard in a podcast um, my husband was listening to a couple of days ago. And the framework of the podcast is that the speaker was really talking about our, our search for meaning in our life. And he was framing it in terms of redemption, um, of that we look for this sense of how do, we, how do we fix what's wrong in the world, right? That that's how we create our meaning. But he said something in that podcast that really struck me as interesting because in my mind as I was listening as I was hearing him basically talk about the path of enlightenment even though he was using the word redemption he was talking about the same thing and he says that where we kind of get caught up in the process or we get caught up in the journey is that we eventually come to this realization that in order to achieve that that big meaning or that really deep meaning of our lives that balances our experiences of all the suffering you know that makes it worthwhile to do what we do so he says that we run into this moment where we realize that in order to achieve this, in order to get there, we have to take responsibility for our own soul. And that that's where we suddenly go, no, <laughs> right? Because to take responsibility for your own soul is also to take responsibility for what it means to be fully human. And that means to be responsible for the full extent of what humanity can be, right? So it's the height, the beauty and the brilliance and as high as you can go, with the soul. And then it's also, here's the depth of what is possible with the human body and the human mind. And to be responsible for that is not to say that you have to deal with all of those problems, right? It's not that you have to fix it, but to know that you are 100% in charge of living as your soul in this existence, that there's nothing in the world that is set up either to make it easy for you or to make it possible for you is that it's possible 100% of the time for you to be living as your soul. But to make the choice to do it means that you have to step beyond those limitations that you're sure require, are required for you to remain who you are. So that idea of having to be responsible for being loved, being responsible for whatever the deepest priorities of your soul are, and living that every day, even if it looks like it doesn't make sense to the rest of the world, even if it looks like it doesn't even make sense to you in your thinking mind. Right. So the practice to get through that moment where the bigness of it all feels like it's overwhelming and we can't possibly succeed. So we don't even try. Right. Is to go into that, into the simplicity of what the priorities of the soul are. Right. Because the priority of the soul is not to keep, you know, a thousand things going on in the world. Priorities of the soul are those few simple things that you embody every moment. And that's what changes the reality that you're in. Right. So that concept of you are responsible for your soul and that that's what it means to be in that enlightened state is that there's no more looking out at the world and thinking that there's something that has to change in order for me to be what I know I'm able to be. There is nothing that has to change in order for me to uh, exhibit what my soul is to live as my soul. But the moment I start to live as my soul and take full responsibility for it, everything in me and around me will change. Right. So it's that reversal of the mind thinking that this has to get easier in order for us to be able to do it. Right. That something has to shift in order for us to be able to do it. You are always able to do it. Right. So this is what we're practicing is can you get to that space where you are living from the priorities of your soul? And there's no thought to or, you know, the primary thought is not what am I accomplishing in the world, but am I living the priorities of my soul? So eyes closed if you're not there already. And bring your attention to the space between your eyebrows. And then not just that physical space of the forehead, but the awareness is there, draw it back into the center of the head. So as though you could draw that line from the point between your eyebrows straight back. The third eye chakra. That said energetically, that's the place where our priorities, right? The actual mechanism we have for understanding the world has the ability to be reorganized. I want you to breathe into that space. It just means keep your attention there as though the breath is moving through that space like a, like a waterfall. 
It's constantly filtering. What is the priority of the soul? And can you feel the actual nature of your breath that as you are breathing, what is subconsciously inherent in your relationship with your breath and with the world? With every breath, can, what is it that you feel? Do you feel an underlying anxiety? Do you feel an underlying feeling of pain? Or are you literally breathing in the experience of the love that we say that we all want? The breath is our immediate link to the prana and it's the immediate link to the deeper layers of the mind. So what's riding on your breath is going to influence your thoughts. And if your breath is bound up in the thinking that you already had that is fearful or unhappy or stuck in the world, that's what's recycling through that third eye space. So can you insert the priority of your soul into the breath? If it's love, you breathe out love. If it's peace, you breathe out peace. It has to be coming from the deep place of your nature, not just the thought that I want to see it happen through someone else. I am responsible for living this, regardless of what anyone else does or doesn't do. And then maintain all of that awareness, but start to cat cow your spine. So let your hands rest on your knees or your thighs. Just move your spine. And keep the awareness still at that space of the third eye. So your body is moving, but the mind stays still. This is meditation. The awareness stays steady. You are responsible for what runs through your breath and your energy field. And if you're not looking to fix it, you're just looking to live the bigness that you are, then the priorities of what you do and don't do in your life change. The way that you do what you do and don't do in your life change. There's no blueprint that says this is the right way to do it or the wrong way to do it. There's just the knowledge that if you are following those priorities of the soul is you will do the best you can, which will yield you the best results. Slowly come back to stillness, please. Rising up through the crown of the head. So feel yourself pulling your spine long by that reaching up. The chest lifts, the ribs draw in, your neck gets longer and then drop your seat. So all of that pulling up internally is balanced by that settling into the wideness of your sit bones. And then relax your shoulders because tension there is not making you bigger. It's just making you tense. And then bring the hands together at the heart center, palm to palm. We'll open with the sound of Om, deep breath in. the eyes float open. Nice, you guys. You can release the hands from front of the heart center. Come forward to hands and knees. And start to move yourself in hip circles. So moving the pelvis.
Good, move yourself the other direction, please. Freeing up space. Talking earlier in the week about how we keep using these words in a collective sense that we are dismantling things. And at that term, you know, that you're taking something apart is beautiful because it means that you get to undo the tension that is built into that way of being. Come back to stillness, please. Spread your fingers wide, tuck your toes, lift your hips, come into downward facing dog. And then in that down dog, bend your elbows wide. Good, so as the elbows bend wide, notice if your hips fell forward a lot. If they did, I want you to scoop your belly, maybe bend your knees, but pull your hips back in space. Elbows still bent, but pull your hips back in space. Good. And then widen that space between the shoulders and the ears. That means push through the crown of your head so your throat gets longer. Good. Now squeeze your elbows towards each other so they point towards the back of your mat. And then press out through your fingers, but pull from your armpits up towards your hips to bring your arms to straight. So everything is you being suspended from your pelvis not you being pushing into your hands and your feet. Good, nice, you guys. Deep breath in, deeper breath out. Nice, right foot steps forward between the hands. Good, both hands come inside the front foot. Do nice big circles with that hip. Nice. So I was using the metaphor that what we do, our sense of reality that's been built on our perceptions, our experiences in our life, it's like the uh, Jenga tower, if you've ever played that game, where you have pieces that are balanced on top of each other because I experienced this and I experienced that, and this is the only way that I can make them fit together and understand why or to have meaning behind why. So as soon as that starts to change, move your hips the other way just a little bit. As soon as that starts to change in any one piece, as the whole thing threatens to come tumbling down, and that's what we try to avoid. Come back to stillness, please. Good, drop that back heel, baby toe parallels the back of your mat. Walk to your left until you come to the center of your mat, please straighten both legs. Good, wide leg good stance, prasarita padottanasana. Beautiful, nice you guys. Bend your elbows a little bit, please. So again, you're dropping into your forward fold a little bit more. Squeeze your legs towards each other. Scoop into your belly. Push your butt up towards the sky. And then relax the torso down even further because, again, you're being suspended from your pelvis. You're being suspended from that energy that is squeezing in and pulling up. Good. And then you're feeling the weight of gravity because that's really physical reality is that weightiness. Good. And it can be something that expands you, but only if you also know how to hold yourself steady. Nice. Plant your right hand right underneath your chest. Please take your left arm to the sky. Spinal twist. Good. As you're coming into that twist, I want you to really draw that right arm, so the arm that's holding you up into the shoulder socket. Good. And then from your lowest part of your belly, lift that left rib cage higher, and then pull your right hip wider to the right, right thigh wider to the right. Good. And then release and go the other way. Left hand down to the floor, right arm to the sky. Nice. So the left thigh here has to pull a little bit wider to keep your pelvis balanced. And then you're drawing in. So everything from the front of the body draws in. So push your sacrum up towards the ceiling. And then that right rib cage is rising up as you also pull your left arm up into the left shoulder socket. Good. And then throat moves back. Nice. Keep the neck open. Keep that line to the third eye really open. Nice. And then release that hand back down to the floor. Good job. Turn your left toes out to the side, all the way out to the left. Bend the knee. Spin your back heel up. So walk towards the left. So you're moving towards your left foot. Spin your back heel up. Both hands are inside the front foot. Make big circles with that hip. Good. Hopefully it didn't cross your mind at all that I am now watching all of your butts wiggle. <laughs> that is my camera view. Good. The idea of dismantling as much as our mind doesn't like it because it feels so unstable. Who am I supposed to be if I take myself apart, move your hips the other way? Is that it gives you the chance to examine every single piece of your perception. It gives you the chance to examine every single thought that runs through your mind and say, really? How is this serving my life? How does this fit into the priorities of my soul? And if it doesn't, 
it gives you the absolute ability to say, I don't have to keep it. This is what it means that you are responsible for what is moving through your mind. Come back to stillness, please. Good. And then walk yourself back to the right. Take that right foot flat to the floor, straighten the legs back to Prasarita Padottanasana. Good. Same thing. So hands to the floor or blocks. Make sure that you're touching something. Then come up on the tippy toes of your feet. Pull your heels up. So you're in wide legs, but you're lifting up onto the balls of your feet. And then I want you to really squeeze your feet towards each other, scoop into your low belly. So you push your sacrum up towards the sky and then start to bend your elbows any amount. So it's like you're dropping yourself deeper into that forward fold, but you're suspending from your pelvis. So pull up, pull up, pull up. Feel those calf muscles engage. And then if you're really high up there, start to walk your hands back almost behind your feet, still up on your tippy toes. I know it's precarious. Good. Yeah, keep scooping, keep lifting. Nice, and then let your heels drop back down to the floor, but don't lose the forward fold. Stay exactly where you are. And maybe even walk yourself further back so that your hands come behind your feet. You can even turn your palms to face back if you want, fingers to face back. Beautiful, but you're still squeezing the legs together and pushing up through the sacrum. Awesome. And then walk yourself back out. Nice job. Turn your right toes out 45 degrees, please, so they come out halfway. Bend that knee so you're coming into a side lunge. So the knee points towards the second or third toe. Good. There you go. And then I want you to really try to scoop that sit bone under so you're drawing your tail down towards the floor and you're lifting the front of your pelvis up off of the front of your thighs. So you're trying to bring your pelvis into a neutral position. You got it. Hands are still on the floor, middle of your mat. Nice. And then either stay here, or some of you may be able to actually come up on that left heel, rotate your left toes up towards the sky, which means that left butt cheek has to go under, your right butt cheek has to roll under. Good. So Heidi, other way, keep that right foot flat to the floor, turn your other foot up, left foot up. There you go. And some of you can drop your seat low enough here where you could even take your hands either to your heart center or up to the sky. Good. If that doesn't make sense, don't force it. Nice, so you're in a side lunge, you guys. Your torso should be, uh, hips should be paralleling or bleh, sideways on your mat. Release the hands down to the floor, good job. Come back to the straight legs. Good, so you're starting in Prasarita Padottanasana, legs wide facing the long edge of your mat because some of you have gone somewhere else. <laughs> good, try the other side. So left toes turn out to 45 degrees, only halfway, so not all the way to the, uh, back of your mat. And then left knee bends pointing towards the second or third toe. Good. Hands stay middle, right? So you're not walking towards that left foot. You're staying just center with your torso. Good. And then again, you're staying here, pulling the inner thighs apart. So that right inner thigh, the extended leg is pulling wide. So there's still weight in that foot. And then you're scooping into your low belly so you can lift the front of your pelvis up and drop your tail under. So you're already working that rotation before you decide if you're going to take your right toes up to the sky. So that's the option is to start to rotate that right leg so that your toes turn up and you're balancing on the heel. Good. Left knee is still over the left ankle. It's pointing towards the third or second toe. Good. And then maybe as you rotate that pelvis under, you can lift your chest and take your hands to your heart center or to the sky. Good. Squeeze the legs towards each other. Nice. Good, Alana. Really nice. Good, Lynn. Nice, Marjorie. And then release the hands down to the floor. Good. Bring both legs back to straight and bow. Nice, you guys. And then bring your hands to your hips, please. Bring yourself all the way up to stand. Heel toe your feet just a little bit closer and then turn both feet out to 45 degrees. Bend both knees, come into high squat. Good. And take your arms out wide, letter T. Same ideas. I want that low part of your belly pulling up so that you are as vertical as you can get with your torso. So Meredith, draw your ribs in. Good. Yeah, draw your ribs back and in. Right arm crosses over top of left in front of your chest. Eagle arms. Good. Good. Sandy too. Ribs in and drop into the length of your pelvis. Your tail is going straight down. Squeeze those legs towards each other. Deep breath. Good. Come all the way up to stand, stretch the arms out wide. Nice. 
and then you're dropping straight back into that pose, you're just gonna cross the arms the other way. So notice right now standing how your pelvis can be neutral. And then as you lower down, try to maintain that, that lift of the front edge of your pelvis, the length of your tail doesn't change as you bend the knees wide. Good, and then left arm over top of right in front of the chest or just wrap the other way if that's uh, the same way that you did it before. Ribs in, and that low place of your belly is pulling up, up, up. Even more, Rhonda, pull it up and then send those thighs wide. Really good, Linda. Nice, Susan. Really good, Harriet. One more breath. Drop yourself a little lower, but press up through the crown of your head. Yeah, and then straighten the legs, take the arms all the way out wide. Nice, you guys. Turn your left toes forward towards the top of your mat. Turn your right toes in just a little bit so that your uh, baby toe parallels the back of your mat. Arms are straight out from the shoulders still. Come into warrior two. So ribs are to the side. Good, so warrior two, left leg forward. Yep. Good, nice you guys. Drop that right hand down the back thigh. Take the left arm up and back, reverse warrior. Yeah, don't worry about which side of your mat you're facing. Some of you are, are getting a little squirrely about it, probably because I made a joke about looking at your butts. Don't worry about it. Come back up to center, please, warrior two. Straighten the front thigh. Good, and then take your hands back behind you. Interlace your fingers at your low back. Yeah, so shrug the shoulders nice and high. Squeeze your upper arms towards each other. So hug the elbows in towards each other so that you get that openness in your chest. And then pull up, get longer. Pull your ribs in against that feeling of squeeze of your shoulder blades, get taller. And then start to straighten the arms, but reach your hands at an angle towards your back heel. And then start to lean forward, left rib cage comes forward over the thigh like you're coming into triangle pose, but your hands are reaching towards your back heel. So keep turning your right ribs up towards the sky, Good, you're not bowing in. You're just literally coming into triangle pose without using your hands. So turn your right rib cage higher to the sky, Valerie and Christian. Yep, turn your belly to the side, you got it, that's it. And your hands are pulling towards your back heel. Get long, good Heidi. Beautiful, one more breath, full length of your spine. Nice, and then bend the front knee again. So the knee's coming more towards warrior two. Keep your hands clasped, but now bow inside the front thigh. So turn your belly towards the floor. Take the arms up and over any amount, and don't let your butt shoot out to the side. Squeeze that left hip back and in. Nice. Good, you guys. And then release the hands back down to the floor. Beautiful, walk back to the inside of the front foot and back, back to the center of your mat. Turn the toes so you're in wide legs. Walk your hands forward in front of you so you're in a nice wide legged downward facing dog. What does it feel like to completely dismantle that feeling of your normal vinyasa? It's a little weird, right? You keep waiting for the regular downward facing dog. Can I stay facing straight ahead and just keep changing my feet? No, sometimes you just have to look at the back of your mat and realize that center is center, regardless of where you are looking. Center is center, right? Unconditional is unconditional. You have to find it in you no matter where you're looking. Walk your hands back in, please. Bring your hands to your hips, come all the way up to stand. Good. So now the right toes are gonna turn forward towards whatever side of your mat that happens to be. Yep. And then you're going to, uh, Sorry, bend that front knee, bend the right knee so that you're coming into warrior two on the other side. Take your arms out wide. That's it. Good. Beautiful, you guys. I completely forget what I had you do here if I had you do anything. <laughs> One more deep breath. And then take your hands back behind you as you straighten that front thigh. Good, I'll remember it eventually. Stretch the arms towards straight, so shoulders shrug up, squeeze the upper arms, and then stretch those arms so that they're reaching back towards your back heel. Good. And then you're turning your ribs like you would for triangle pose, so your left rib cage is gonna spin back a little bit. And then lean over that front thigh like your torso is coming into triangle, but you're not using your hands. You're continuing to pull the arms towards that back heel. So don't just pull them straight back. Keep the angle of I'm reaching my arms 
at the same direction, the same diagonal towards my back heel. Because that's going to set the angle of my ribs. It's going to set the connection, the relationship between my ribs and my shoulders. Sorry, my ribs and my hips. Also your shoulders, but more important, your hips. Good. Squeeze your legs together. That's it. Beautiful. And then keep the arms where they are. Bend that right knee again so it's moving more towards warrior two. And then spin your chest down towards the floor. Take the arms up overhead any amount. Good. Keep your right butt cheek squeezing in towards the midline. Nice spread. Beautiful. And then go ahead and release the hands down to the floor. Walk back to the center of your mat, wide legs. Good. That's what it means to dismantle things. You take it apart piece by piece and say, if I just don't put it back together the same way, do I have something that is maybe more spacious and more available for change? Good. Take your right hand to your outer left ankle or shin. Left arm to the sky. Good. And as you have that twist happening, remember that right arm that is holding the ankle is pulling up into the shoulder socket. So draw it in. Good. And then use that drawing in in order to lift the left side of your chest wider, higher. Turn your heart to the sky, but draw your throat back. Good. And then release and switch. Come back to center. Pause in the middle. And then go the other way. So you're taking your left hand to the right ankle, right arm to the sky. Good. And you're pulling that left arm into the shoulder socket. And your upper chest is pulling wide, but your left hip has to pull wide as well. So Valerie, move that left hip wider. Nice, you guys. If you're flexing your wrist here, try to bring your wrist back to neutral so your hand is not uh, creating tension and then release back to center. Nice job, you guys. Good, heel toe your feet closer to each other so that your feet are right underneath your hips. There you go, feet all the way together, big toes and, uh, big toes and heels together. Come up on your tippy toes, so again, hands to the floor or block if you can't comfortably have the hands on the floor. Pull up, good. Yep, and then you're gonna bend your knees out wide like a little frog and drop your hips down towards your heels. As you do, your chest is gonna lift up. If you can't, if the knees don't like that, then you can just uh, keep the heels flat in uh, chair pose. Good, and then you're gonna lift your hips back to the sky, hands still on the floor. Lift your hips up, squeeze the legs together as you come up, still on your tippy toes. Good, these are called frogs. Bend your knees wide, drop your hips down to your heels lifting the chest as you do that consciously. So you gotta keep your core engaged. Lift the hips back up, squeeze the inner thighs, still up on your tippy toes. So you're not leaning so much on your hands, but you're finding the strength of your legs. Drop down. And again, you can do this just in chair pose, still with the hands on the floor. You just don't drop the hips so low. And then straighten the legs. Good, and squeeze. Two more like that. Bend the knees, go wide, dropping the hips down towards your heels, chest lifts and then squeeze the hips back up towards the sky. Squeeze the legs up on your tippy toes, pull up through your calves, suspended by your pelvis. One more, bend the knees wide, drop your hips down towards your heels. Good, and then lift back up, squeezing the legs, suspend from your pelvis. Beautiful, and then keep the legs as they are, bend back down into that squat one more time if you can. Good, stay there. Let your heels start to drop towards the floor in that little frog squat. Walk your hands forward a little bit more like you're in a forward fold. Shoulders inside your knees. You're squeezing the knees against your ribs. And then optional is to wrap the arms, elbows in front of your shins, wrap the arms around the front of your legs and hold hands behind your heels. So you're literally hugging the front of your legs with your arms and holding hands behind your heels. Good. And you're letting your heels drop towards the floor. You can always sit in Baddha Konasana here if that full squat doesn't work. Yeah, lift your chest wider, throat longer, and butt hips and heels moving towards the floor. Good, you guys. It's an awkward pose, I know. Release the hands down to the floor, please. Good. Slowly take your legs back up to straight. I know. <laughs> In Kundalini, sometimes when you're doing frogs is, is uh, in various things is you'll do, you know, as many as 52 of those in a row. So, you know, you did five. 
<laughs> Maybe more if you were going faster. Take your hands to your hips, come all the way up. Good, but it's said that, uh, or at least I remember it being said that that action helps to actually move things like uh, how sugar accumulates in the body or it tightens the body as it helps to move that out. Good, so still standing middle of your mat. I love it if you're not facing front or back, but you're facing the middle, is to take your right knee up and towards your chest. Good, and if you were facing the front or back of your mat, I don't mind. Do, do whatever you do. Hug your knee in towards your chest, squeeze. Good, and then take that ankle on top of the knee, so right ankle on top of left thigh, bend the left knee, take your butt back, and arms up alongside your ears. Good. Beautiful. One more breath, reach long, pull your butt back. Good, Mark. And then slowly come, reach the hands down to the floor, please. Yeah, or to your block. Start to straighten that left leg and then bring your right foot down to the floor, ankle crossed in front of your left. So right leg crossed in front of left, but both feet flat on the floor. Good, hands on blocks or again, fingertips to the floor. Yeah, so you're in a straight legged fold. Beautiful. And then I want you to bend that back knee just a little bit. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to pop your knees forward a little bit. Good. And then I want you to scoop your low belly and push your hips up towards the sky. Keep both of your feet anchored to the floor. Good. But pull up, pull up, pull up. And that right hip is going to probably drop a little bit lower. So pull your right low belly a little higher. And pull up, pull up, pull up. Doesn't matter if your legs come completely to straight, but don't lock the back knee. Good. And then slowly release, unwind the ankles, please. Beautiful. Take your hands to your hips, come all the way up to stand. Good. Second side, draw your left knee up and towards your chest. Squeeze it in. And then take the ankle across the right thigh, bend the right knee, take your butt back, cross-legged chair, arms out alongside your ears. And I want you to feel that there's this pulling long of your spine. So your hips are pulling back at a diagonal and your armpits are pulling forward at the same diagonal, just in the other direction. So we're not falling into the arch of the ribs or the lower back as we're actually drawing everything into that center space, the spine space, the shashumna, that's that central channel. You're drawing everything into that and then pulling it long. Good. So wherever it feels like that isn't happening, try to find where it can happen. Ribs in. Good. Release the hands down to the floor, slow, or use blocks. And then start to straighten, nice job, Jen. Start to straighten that uh, right leg and let the left foot come to the uh, outside of the right foot. So you're straightening both legs, crossing the left ankle in front of the right. Good. Make sure you can feel both feet. And then again, your back knee is bending a little bit more. So your shins move forward in space. And then scoop your low belly, push your butt up to the sky to take your legs any amount to straight. Good, don't let your knees lock back. Don't let your hips fall back in space. Keep them right where they are. Good. Had a conversation with someone the other day and they were talking about how, you know, so much in life has just been changing, 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 and, you know, things are evolving, however they're evolving. And she's like, I just wish that it was nicer. Feels like it should be nicer. But center is center. Unconditional is unconditional. Your soul is your soul. So what we're struggling with is to find that in ourselves is what does it feel like to be in that center place that is unconditional with what we know is the priority of the soul? What does it feel like? It's not as nice as you want it to be, <laughs> but it's how we get there. Uncross the ankles, please. Good. Take a moment hanging in that forward fold. Beautiful. And then bring your hands to your hips, please. Come all the way up to stand. Nice. Separate your feet nice and wide on your mat. Still facing to the side. Good. And then turn your right toes forward towards that end of your mat. Most of you will consider that the front of your mat. Good. Bend the knee. Come into warrior two. Arms wide. Beautiful. And then drop the right forearm to the front thigh, left arm over the ear, side angle. Good. 
and then bring that left hand down to your left hip. And for a moment, push that hip up into your hands so that you have that feeling of real lift in that back thigh. And then bring the right hand down to the floor or a block so that you can move into Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. So as you bring your weight onto that right hand, onto that right leg, as that left leg lifts up, as you're stacking it on top of that standing thigh, you're pushing your left hip up to the ceiling. So still push up into that hand. Good, and turn your heart to the sky. Move your ribs open. And then maybe you take your left arm all the way up. Maybe you keep your left hand where it is. Good. And that arm that's holding you, draw the shoulder blade up and towards the center of your chest. Beautiful. If you'd like to bend your, your uh, lifted knee, your left knee in towards your butt, heel in towards your butt, and reach back for the foot or the ankle, you're welcome to do that. Beautiful. Long breaths. What is cycling through every breath? Are you breathing your own anxiety or are you breathing from somewhere deeper? Good. Extend all the way back out. Really good, you guys. Step all the way back to that warrior two position. Cartwheel the arms up. Good. Straighten the right thigh. Turn your right toes in. Turn your left toes out. You're just moving to the second side. <laughs> this is what life is like if you pretend that there's no such thing as a vinyasa. Bend your left knee, take your arms wide, warrior two, facing the other way. Good. And we forget, right, that because most of us are used to a vinyasa style, that not every style of yoga suggests that you do that. Left forearm to front thigh, right arm over the ear, find side angle. Good. And then bring your right hand to your right hip, please. Push up into that hand so you get that power in the back leg. And then bring the left hand down to the floor or a block. Now, here's the only thing where if you are facing what you would consider the back of your mat, you might have to adjust a little bit so that you have room to balance. Good. So slide yourself forward onto that left hand. Right hand can stay at the hip. Push up. So that leg that's lifted is not just there suspended in space for no reason. Is that it's actually there pre uh, creating an extension from your, from your spine, from your ribs. Good. Left arm can go to the, uh, sorry, right arm can go to the sky when you've got it. Really nice. It's fun sometimes those crazy pictures people post of doing yoga in strange places. If you want to come into that thigh stretch, you can bend the right knee, kick your heel in towards your butt and reach back. You see people doing poses, you know, up on precarious places or in scenery where you're like, that doesn't look like a good idea. The point is, is you can practice anywhere. You can be the priority that you want to see from your soul at any time, but it's your responsibility to do it and to figure out what is the best way. Extend that leg back behind you. So don't wait for an instruction manual. Your yoga practice is your instruction manual. Step back to warrior two, cartwheel the arms up. Really good, you guys. Beautiful. Straighten that left leg. Turn the toes forward again. Take your hands back behind you. Interlace the fingers. Good. So you're standing uh, in that wide-legged stance, feet parallel again. Good. Yeah. And then bend your knees so that your uh, butt can come parallel. Or sorry. So your thighs can come parallel to the floor. Take your butt back. Lean your torso forward halfway. So you're paralleling the floor. And arms, hands are clasped behind you. So again, you're drawing long. And as you draw long, your ribs are going to pop out. Don't pretend that they're not. So pull your ribs in. Lift that front edge of your pelvis up and squeeze your feet towards each other. Good. Now maintain that. Scoop into that low belly. Push your butt to the sky as you drop your head towards the floor and come into that forward fold. Nice. Don't collapse the belly and the top of the pelvis towards each other. Really good, you guys. And then release the hands down to the floor. Beautiful. Walk to your right so that you can turn your toes forward. For most of you, this is coming back towards the top of your mat. If it's not, find your way back to the top of your mat just because it's easier. Downward facing dog, facing the way that you like to face. <laughs> Beautiful. Right leg comes up and back down dog split, please. Bring that knee forward and wide, pigeon pose. Ekapada Raja Kapato, kapato Asana. 
king pigeon. Good. Get really long through your belly. So before you come forward, push into that front shin, lift those front hip points higher and squeeze that left hip point forward, forward, forward to make space for the right side to open. Then walk yourself forward, find your resting pigeon. Don't let your pelvis collapse towards the floor. So it's like you still want your sit bones anchoring down and you still want the front edge of your pelvis lifting up off of your thighs. Because if we just lean forward and tilt the pelvis that way, then we're not creating any sort of new opening in the hips. We've just compensated for where our hips don't want to be opening. Good, and when we do that all the time, we call that conditioning. <laughs> I'm hanging on to what is normal, what is comfortable. And I'll just keep shifting things around so that that precarious balance doesn't fall apart. And I do think this is why it's said that when we practice uh, many of these forms of meditation and we're practicing with that goal of really understanding that inner self is that it's always the metaphors are that we disappear. Is that there's a feeling of dissolving, dismantling. And it's not that nothing is left behind, it's only that what is left behind is only the priorities. And all the rest of the details are no longer what our mind is obsessed with. The speaker also said in that podcast that how we continue to stay in this state of being able to move forward is that we go through these micro deaths all the time. Those little micro deaths allow for things to be reborn and for there to be a feeling of adaptation. But center is still center. Right? That unchangeable truth that is your soul is still exactly what it's always been. One more breath. I'm going to walk yourself back up, please. Good, sit towards that right hip so you can swing your left leg around in front of you. Then you're crossing your left knee on top of your right, so you're coming into Gomukhasana, so the thighs are stacking if that's possible. If it's not possible, the knees don't like that position, you can always sit up on a prop, that might help. Or you can sit with your left shin in front of your right cross-legged with your feet flexed. Good, flex the feet, please. And then go ahead and walk forward if that's possible, so forward fold. Uh, so Alice, not um, fire log. Yeah, there you go. Good. Feet flexed. So this is internal rotation. So the hips, in order for them to really be open, is they need to experience both the outward rotation and the inward rotation. And one of them is what you're going to like more than the other. So this position is internal rotation of your hips. Pigeon pose is external rotation of your hips. And if you decide that you don't like either, well, there's nothing I can do for you. One more breath. And then walk yourself back up, please. Beautiful. So unwind the legs so you can cross just at the ankles, roll forward onto hands and knees, bring yourself back to downward facing dog, do it in some way that looks very exciting. Entertain me. Good, nice, saw a little jump happen here or there. Beautiful. And then left leg comes up and back, down dog split. Bring that knee forward and wide, find pigeon on the other side. And again, before you collapse into that forward fold, pause, press into that front shin, get long through your belly. So use this as a feeling of stretching from the top of your thigh all the way through the front of your pelvis up into your belly space. Good, and your ribs draw back, nice. And then that right hip, that back hip spins forward so that your left low belly can go wider. So I want to see your pelvis actually shift there. Really good, Christian. And then walk yourself forward. Nice, Jen. Nice, Lauren. Good. Just flex your feet there, Linda. Yeah, there you go. Nice, you guys. Can you catch the vibration of what runs through your breath? 
And I guarantee that it's carrying the habit of what your thinking has been. So if your thinking has been in a direction that is stressful or that is fearful or that is focused on what's painful right now or ever, that's what you're breathing in. And that's what you're breathing out. And so it permeates the reality around you. So what yoga says is wherever your attention is, is that thing is going to grow larger in your eyes. It's going to grow bigger. So it means that it will draw you to and draw to you those very people and situations that mirror that. And then we say, ah, I knew it was true the whole time. My fears are real. Because my experience tells me so. And your experience is real, but it's not always the full expression of truth, the way your mind interprets it. It's not all there is. So you are responsible for going beyond that edge of what you thought was the truth because that's what you experience. Go to the priorities of your soul. Are you breathing that? What are the unconditional things in you that no matter the circumstances of your life, you want to be present? And then all there is is to just do the best you can. Good. One more deep breath. Soften into your pose more. The last breath is for you to really embody the pose. Relax into it. Not to say, oh, good, I'm done. Walk yourself back up. Now you can say, oh, good, I'm done. Drop onto that left thigh, please. Bring your right leg around in front of you. And cross the knee over top. So you're uh, stacking the knee on top of the other knee. So your thighs should be pretty much together. And again, if the knees don't uh, work in this position or they're not comfortable in this position, as you can sit up higher, that might help. Or you can have your right shin in front of your left cross-legged. Flex your feet. Good. And then if you can forward fold, walk yourself forward. If you can't, you can just stay where you are up uh, on your fingertips with your chest lifted. Keep your feet flexed. Good. It would be lovely if we could just simply take apart the Jenga board in a way that was easy. We could just remove the one or two things that we feel like we're ready to remove without the whole thing coming crashing down. But that's not how perception works. That's not how conditioning works. It's all tied together. The yoga practice says, are you willing to look beyond that to the simple priorities of your soul and redesign, redesign what runs through your mind? Redesign where your attention is focused and what you believe the world to be. Walk yourself back up. Good. Unwind the legs, please. Beautiful. Bring the bottoms of the feet together. Let your knees go wide. Baddha Konasana. Good. Press into the baby toes so your feet are anchored to the floor and then start to walk yourself forward. Changed my mind, so come back up. <laughs> I want you to do it different. So before you come forward, I want you to press your feet into the floor, but I want you to bring your knees up. So squeeze your knees towards each other. Yeah, so not so far that you can't still get your shoulders between your knees, but I want you to engage. So don't use your hands. I want you to just use your legs. So no hands. <laughs> but I want you to squeeze your knees up just a little bit away from the floor so your groins go down more. And then I want you to walk yourself forward into that forward fold and have those knees squeeze up alongside your ribs. Good. And as you're squeezing up, I want you to still try and send your tail and your sit bones back and wide, but you're squeezing your knees in. Good. Your shoulders are relaxed away from your ears. I know some of you are like, no, they're not. Yeah. So bring them to a relaxed place. Get wider. 
Go ahead, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the legs. Walk yourself out a little further. Nice. And then stay in the forward fold and just relax the effort of the legs. Let the legs go wide and then feel your spine fall forward even more because you relax that effort. Good. And then bring yourself all the way back up. Nice. And then scoot yourself forward. Come onto your backs. Or do whatever maneuvering you'd like to do to be on your back. Good, bend your knees, please. Yeah, and then bring your right knee in towards your chest. Good, hold behind the thigh. Good, and then extend that heel up towards the ceiling. Don't straighten the other leg yet, so keep that left knee bent. Good, because again, I want you here to be focused on what you can do with your pelvis. So I want the top of your right thigh pulling away from your belly. Push it away from your belly so that you feel more of your sacrum finding its way to the floor. Good, that left groin, so the knee that is bent, you're rolling that down to the floor. So I want you feeling like you're tilting the top of your pelvis away from your belly. Good, but your hands are still trying to pull that thigh in towards your chest. Yeah, but you're lengthening your low spine from internal space. From the low belly, you're lengthening, beautiful. Good, now maintain that, straighten the left leg out on the floor. Good. Nice, you guys. Press that left heel down to the floor so that leg is extended, but there's still activity there. Beautiful. And then take that right leg, let it fall out to the right, please. You can hold behind that thigh still. Let it fall out to the right towards that right shoulder. Good. So sometimes we do this with a strap. I want you purposefully doing it without the strap. Good. Keep your left hip rooted to the floor. Beautiful. Keep that rotation where your right inner heel is spinning up just a little bit more. So it's like your right butt cheek is, is rolling under. Good, Jen, more left hip down to the floor. There you go. And then bring that leg back up to center, please. Good, start to take it across your body. So before you come into the twist, just move the leg at an angle towards your left shoulder. So the hand is either behind the thigh or again, you could reach for behind the calf or the ankle if that's possible. But the leg is angled over towards your left shoulder. Good, and your right sit bone is, or your right butt cheek is still pushing down to the floor. You got it, so it's not a full twist yet. Yeah, good, breathe that for a moment. Stretch through that whole length of the leg and then bring the leg all the way over into a spinal twist. Keep it straight if you can. You can always place that foot onto a block if you have one. Uh, that's a really nice way to make this a little bit more restorative. Good. If having the leg straight just feels impossible, you can always bend the knee in your spinal twist. Good. Dropping the knee towards the floor. Keep that length on your spine though. So from your armpit to your hip, you're pulling the top of that thigh down towards your opposite heel. Good. Nice, you guys. And then slowly bring it back in. So bend the right knee, come all the way back to center, squeeze the knee in towards your chest. Good, push the shin back against your hands. Beautiful and then release that right foot down to the floor, knee bent. Good, draw your left knee in towards your chest. Keep that right foot flat on the floor. Hold behind your left thigh, press the left heel up towards the ceiling. Right knee is still bent. Good, so as you're pushing that thigh into your hands, you're also taking the top of that left thigh away from your belly. So that's important because you're hollowing that space between the thigh and the hip points. You're making more room there. And then you're rotating your tailbone and that right groin down towards the floor. So you're tilting your pelvis forward away from the belly. Good, but you're still trying to lengthen that, that left leg as much as you can and draw it in. Awesome, Harriet, just move your heel a little wider to the left. There you go, that's more in line with your hip. Good, and then straighten the toes back out. There you go. Good, you guys. Good, Pam, just stretch up through that left heel a little longer. And then straighten the right leg out on the floor. So can maintain everything that you were just doing, just straighten the right leg. Good. 
and then let that left leg start to drop out wide to the left. Keep your right leg anchored though. So your right heel is pressing down. Your right hip, your right side sacrum is rooted down to the floor. Don't let it change. Good. Mark, just use one hand to hold the leg so that your right shoulder can relax. There you go. Good. Yeah, and you got to turn that inner left heel under so it's reaching up towards the sky. There you go. I know it's a lot harder to do this without the strap. It'd be so much nicer to do it with the strap. <laughs> but you got to find it in you. Come back up to center. Good. Move that leg across towards your right shoulder. Keep it straight. So now the right hand can hold or support the leg either behind the thigh, behind the calf, or reaching for the foot. But don't go into the full twist yet. I just want you to angle that leg towards the right shoulder so that you actually feel that full stretch from your heel all the way up to your hip. And keep that left sit bone down to the floor. Good. So not a full twist yet. Nice. Then go ahead, take it into the full spinal twist, dropping that left leg, left hip all the way over. And again, you can place a block or something underneath that heel or underneath the foot to support it in that straight legged twist. Good. If having the leg straight is just not working, it's a little too intense, you can always bend the knee, come into your spinal twist with the bent knee. Good. If your leg is straight though, I want you to keep pulling it up towards your opposite shoulder. So it's gotta keep going up towards the right shoulder. So split the legs more. Good. Nice, Jen. Good, you guys. And then slowly release, coming back to center, bend the knee, bring it back in towards your chest. As you squeeze it in, press the shin back against your hands. Good. And then bring both knees in towards the chest, squeeze. You got it. Bring your forehead up to meet your knees, hug, 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 hug. Beautiful. And then release back to your, uh, release the shoulders to the floor, take your feet to the floor. One bridge pose just to, again, get into the full length of your spine. Press down to the arms, either arms straight or in robot arms. Good. Find the arch of your armpit. So bring your armpits up first. Good. Find the length of your tail. And then from there, squeeze your heels back so your butt's moving towards your heels. And from your ribs, rise up, rise up, rise up. And then the hips follow. Good. So it's the pushing down of the arms and the rising up of the armpits that creates your lift. And it's that space that is underneath you, the space that's created around you as you come into your pose that is the true expression of the pose. It's not the physical. This is what my body can do or it can't do. Good. Slowly release the hips back down to the floor. Pause for a moment. And then start to stretch the legs out in front of you, arms alongside you. Turning the palms up, settling for Shavasana. A little practice for your Shavasana, if you would like. It's often said Shavasana, you should really just let yourself go into no effort whatsoever. The reminder is that as you are breathing into the space around you, it's to be pulling from deep within. So that Maitri meditation that we say where you breathe out the relationship with the world where every being you are wishing for their happiness, for their safety, for their well-being. May they experience love. May they be free from suffering. And you can start from the very narrow place of your own self or those that you hold very dear and then just expand it out and out and out 
with every breath, it gets a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, and you have no idea what it means for all beings to be without suffering. You have no idea what it means for you to be without suffering. You don't have to. You just have to know that it's a priority. So you breathe at every breath. Very gently bring the awareness back to your breath. Letting the body begin to stretch and move. 
in the ways that serve it well. And as you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest. And roll to your right side. And take a moment there before you begin to push the floor away, come back to an upright seated position. Bring the hands together at the heart center, palm to palm. Or again, Lotus Mudra, if that is your preference, whatever your preference is. On this podcast, it was said that if we got to the point, when we get to the point where we can touch those priorities of the soul or we can see ourselves as that, that it wouldn't make any sense for us to do anything that was going to create suffering in the world. It just wouldn't make sense to do it. We would just be, all be walking around, he said, telling the truth all the time. And that truth would be something that wasn't about your personal variety of truth. It would be a truth that is meant to uplift your soul and uplift, therefore, the souls of all beings. It says it would be automatic. The challenge is that we struggle to get into that space of the bigness of things being your responsibility to embody, that somehow you have to fix all of it, and you don't. It's not about fixing, but it is about dismantling where you have built a tower that is impossible for your soul to live in, where you've built perception, where your soul says, I can't be what I am because you insist that it look this way. So the practice that we are given is one where we go willingly into that space to say, what is most important to me that exists in this world? And can I embody that the best that I can? Not perfectly. Can I embody it the best that I can every moment, no matter where I'm looking and no matter what the people and the places and the things in the world around me are doing? Because this is how we change the reality. It's not that we wait for the world to give us a nice opening. It's not that we wait that if we want love that the universe is going to bring loving beings to us. It will, but you have to find it in you. So you create the loving relationship or the peaceful relationship or whatever your priority is with the world. And then the reality around you changes because you're breathing that now into the collective breath. And your mind is moving that into the collective mind. And the soul, which is all one anyway, is living through you so completely that you have no desire anymore to do anything that's going to create suffering. And you don't have to know what it looks like. But you can go to that place where you can start to identify what are the priorities of my soul, not my mind. And live it. And I guarantee the world will become nicer to you. <laughs> the process will seem more meaningful. And then there's an increased willingness to get up and do it again tomorrow. You have to love yourself for your practice, your successes and your failures. And then realize that what you're still reaching for is beyond both. We'll close the sound of Om, deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste, everybody. Thank you guys so, so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. It's really nice out, so go outside. Even if you're only sitting outside, go outside. I will unmute you. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. And if you're staying for meditation at 1230 uh, or 1130, whatever day it is, um, you don't have to sign out. You can just stay on. If you need to wander away, you can come back, uh, but you don't have to. I'm leaving this meeting up. So if you want to stay, you can stay or 